I covered this in one of my previous videos but you can get this socket I got it from like summit it was like 15 bucks and it has that little keyway in there so that you can actually sit that on the snout of the crank and actually turn this right turn it easily so it has a driver for a half inch too so um, anyway the next thing uh, the cranks in the cams in I got these um, two bolts for the thrust on the cam that's put up put in the cover so now I have my timing chain here and I have the upper cam sprocket so again I'm gonna put this put this back and if you look right there you maybe can see a little dot and then right here on the top of the um, sprocket there is a little dot and those dots should point at each other so I try and get this all lined up Okay, so those are in finger tight. Now I should just do it for a check because these aren't exactly lined up. Now they are. So that is, I would say, basically perfect. So maybe you can see the dots right there. One there and one there. So those are all lined up straight. They're straight for you. So, um, anyway, I'll torque those down to the uh, appropriate uh, value. Now that I got the crank put in and torqued down, I'm going to go move on to the rods and pistons here. Um, I have a new set of rings right here. So there's the top ring, second ring, oil ring set. And so... I'm going to um, take my sweet little cheapo pliers and get those all set up the way they should be. So, I'll do that now. all ringed out again and so the top ring is a square ring meaning it doesn't have any bevel or dot or anything that indicates which direction it goes I think I might be able to pop it out here mm, yeah so no bevel on it the second ring though has a bevel on it and I looked at this before I did it but basically um, I don't know if we'll be able to see it here But the top of that, that ring is actually beveled. You can see on the inside. And so um, you need that to be facing up, you know, towards the top of the piston. So that's something that you need to, to watch when you're putting these together. But other than that, um, we got these all fixed up. They're good. And then I just kind of like, I kind of slide them around, make sure they move really flip freely. If there's any burrs or anything, you know, we want to take that off now. All right, so kind of a noob here, so I'm going to show you the mistake I went through. So I ordered these um, rod bearings, and you know, pretty much I thought 
they were kind of all the same, but I honestly don't know what I screwed up. I thought they were 2.100, uh, 2.100 inch, um, bearings and they just aren't. So, um, what I'm going to show you is, so this is one of the old bearing shells. And if you'll notice how I put this in the cap, see how it like, I mean, frankly, it's a tight fit. It goes in there and it sits like perfect down in there. Meaning like the, ed the edge right there, you could see it's like flush. And if I'd push it down in there, it'd be perfectly flush, right? It sticks out just a little bit just because it's not in there all the way. Focus. There it is. Okay. So that's, that's one of the old bearings. So the first set that I got was this guy. And they come in a regular pack like that, and you just throw them in here, and all of a sudden I go to put this in here, and like, it just doesn't fit, you know. First of all, there's that gap right there, which shouldn't be there. This tang is supposed to fit like right perfectly in there. And then also, if you look at it from the side here, you know, it doesn't fill the whole shell, or the whole cap. So that's screwed. So then I had to wait, you know, another four days or whatever it was for parts to come in. So now I got these guys, which uh, it's a a or ACL race series, whatever. I don't know. It was just some cheapos I found online, and they have you know uppers and lowers or whichever direction it is. And then so I got one of those here, and that's this guy. He's got like a little coating on him. But anyway, you put him in there, and again get that nice tight fit that what you want. You know how. It, basically sits in there and then it's tough to do with one hand but anyway so once it's done see how it fits in there you know perfect really both sides are in there the tang looks good so that's how you want this to be so I don't know I just totally hose this up so that was that was annoying and then another deal was um, on the ring set that I bought is just a set of Chevy rings you know but Anyway, the, the depth of this oil ring groove was um, 183, right there, 183 thousandths, okay? That's the depth of it. Well, the old ring was 170 deep, and the new ring was 189, and if you remember, 183 is our depth. This protrudes 6 thousandths, and this is recessed 13 thousandths. So, basically, that, that new oil ring was not even able to compress enough to get down into the into the groove and so what I did was I went to go put him into the block and every time I would put him in the compressor and it would it would come here's the, the block coming up coming up coming up or the pistons going down in there and it would get hooked on this first oil support ring and I'm like what in the heck is going on so yeah then I did some like more detailed measurements and yeah, those just won't work. So here they are. If anybody wants a set, <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw them out. So basically, it has that little ridge right there, right on the very end. I can hang my fingernail on it. And that is keeping those, those support rings pushed out so much that it wouldn't work. So realizing this is, you know, kind of a budget build or whatever, and I just honestly don't want to spend any more money on it, I... Um, on the engine of it because I just it seems fine it ran fine like whatever as far as the the oiling it didn't smoke or anything so I and they look good so I took the old oil rings that's these right here cleaned them up you know best I could which and eh, it's not gonna focus super great but it's decent but anyway they're recessed so when I push this down like it actually can get down you know get away so and they still have good spring in them so anyway I got them all cleaned up and put back on so I have new top rings new second rings and then i'm just reusing these oil rings because it's just a, an oil control deal so anyway just a kind of a fiasco honestly but that's mostly on my part i probably just don't know what i'm doing there but um that seems to be what gets you is these parts deals so anyway i'm gonna go and try and throw a piston in this sucker and see how we do okay so i have that ring or the new sorry the new bearing whoa focus come on phone slapped in here and so you'll notice the tang the tangs match up so there's a tang on here and then there's one on the actual cap as well see tang right there so then 
the only other deal is in the package and on the actual part number for this bearing, it has a, on the back, it's, it's now covered by the cap, but basically it had like part number space U and part number space L. Well, this here would be the L, which is the lower, and this here would be the U, the upper of the, of the two halves. And then you'll notice too, like this shape is not symmetric. So that matches up with the fact that that is not symmetric. You can see there's there's kind of a shape to it. So you put those two together, put those two together as they, you know, those will go together as the shape is. And then you'll notice, see those two uh, focuses, those two tangs will match. You know, they'll meet up with each other, not meet up, but they're on the same half. And then this side doesn't have any. And then the only other thing you need to look for, I didn't take the rods pistons apart from each other, but to help me orient then, this this will see there's that little um, little mark there um, on the left hand side of the piston near the valve clearances, right there. Nice. That is the uh, the marker that would indicate the front of the motor. So in this case, this is number one. I have it marked number one. I got a little one written right there. See the one? There's the three and so on and so forth. So the front of the engine, it would go in like that. Not, not like that. Like that. See how that little notch is forward. So I'm going to put the um, ring compressor on this thing, tighten it up, square it up with the face of the, the deck, and then I'm going to try and drive this in. So I got, I got all my rings on there. I have the the gaps of the rings not lined up with each other, even though they do rotate, but I'm just trying to give myself at least a head start on that. So anyway, and then I got this all slathered with oil. I'm going to slather this thing up with oil. You can see it's almost wet. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to see if we can get it to go home. Then I'm going to put some assembly lube on the bottom side as it's mating onto the crank, flip it over, tighten one up, so on and so forth. And uh, we'll see if we can get a little luck tonight. Alright, my boy Scott's here, <laughs> helping me out, moral support. We got the windage tray put back on, and so um, got the rods and pistons all put in, 45 foot-pounds, tightened up, spun it over a few times, everything looks good. And then, so here's the, the one bolt for the oil pump, I'll get that in, and then the nuts for the uh, windage tray, we'll put those on. So. The one for the oil pump is what, 60, 65 foot-pounds, and then these here are 25, the, the five windage tray bolts. So anyway, I'm gonna send those now. <laughs> 